you're a Frenchman who founded, yes. or not founded, but was taken over found, the, yeah. Fir yes. the first Chinese luxury brand. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Well, uh, first of all, uh, when I left France, I left France 30 years ago, um, I, I, I had two choices. I was, either I was a cook, I was in the luxury business. I can't cook, so I had to end up in the luxury <laughs> industry. Uh, but seriously, in 94, when I joined Hong Kong, uh, it was just before the handover, and David Tang, the founder of Shanghai Tang, founded Shanghai Tang, and it was a beautiful concept store, extremely strong, extremely different, very um, based on the Art Deco style, romantic 1930s Shanghai. And for a Western guy like me coming to Hong Kong for the first time, I was fascinated by the concept. And, um, you know, uh, I was lucky enough uh, uh, to come and, uh, and, and run the show uh, in 2002. Um, so we took over these beautiful concept stores and started to, with very big, nice DNA, we tried to turn it into what would be um, a viable, scalable uh, Chinese luxury brand. Okay. And so, did you come up with the ideas of kind of adding this Western elements but keeping the Chinese kind of fashion? That's the thing, is when I went to Shanghai Times the first day and uh, as appointed as chairman, I went to the men's section and there was nothing I could wear on a daily basis. Uh, Not the Mao jacket. Well, it was, uh, yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I, you imagine a Western guy wearing on a daily basis a Mao jacket. First, it's not my convictions, yeah. and secondly, you, you, you look ridiculous. So, uh, uh, apart from being going to a Chinese bowl, but so, um, so uh, yeah, we started, I, I started hiring designers, and the mission was to do uh, the modern Chinese chic. So, we had to have some Chinese elements revisited into a contemporary design approach um, and that's has how we all started uh, ready to wear. Okay. So when you look at the partnership with, with the Longshi Masters, mm -hmm. what attracted you to this event? Was it uh, like people that the event was bringing were your target customers? Tell me about that. I wrote it a bit backwards. First, I was on the uh, prod committee of Hackett, which was a, uh, a beautiful British brand, and I was asking the CEO, um, how many polo shirts do you sell a year? And he told me an astronomical uh, number. I went back and I, I, I went to my head designer, I say, we want to do polo shirts with Mandarin color. So, as you can see, the Mandarin yeah. color is on all our, uh, on all our shirts, yeah. Um, so, so you see, this is a Mandarin color, or the Sun Yat-sen color, the a, a sort of officer color. Then we had to find a legitimacy to these polo shirts. And then we started um, uh, sponsoring uh, stories behind it. And the first tournament we did was in Mongolia. This was a tournament we did in Mongolia. It was the first polo tournament in Mongolia where the sports is already originated from, uh, because we were sourcing our Kashmir there. And so we were looking at stories again, and we started with polo in Mongolia. Then we started sponsoring polo, a women's polo, because the women give us most of our revenue, as you can imagine. So uh, we started making a, a, a sponsorship in Singapore uh, for international polo tournaments. And then um, I met with Christophe Hammer a few years ago, uh, being a, a, a you know a fan of horses and riding, uh, and he was. He was telling me I'm bringing uh, uh, show jumping to Hong Kong, which for me was just uh, unimaginable because it's so complicated to put 80 Grand Prix horses on a, on a Boeing 77 and bring them for a week in Hong Kong where you have long quarantine issues and everything. He did it. And then last year I was discussing with him and said, you know, could you, could you put a few polo horses in the plane with the Grand Prix horses so that we could basically show for the first time in Hong Kong, uh, polo being played, because the polo hasn't been played since um, uh, actually uh, 35 years ago. Because really? the, 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 the British took it back. The British them? army was playing, yeah. And of course, when the British army left, uh, they were playing in Lowu, so at the Chinese border, when the British army left, they, uh, they took the club with them. Actually, the club is in one of the countryside of, of England with all the cups and everything. So we were left with nothing after the end over. Um, and with a very big issue of lands. We don't have lands now. So the only way to actually have polo being shown in Hong Kong was to do it with the masters. So that's how it started. I don't know if you know Christophe Amo, he's really? just a visionary. He, yeah. He's scared of nothing. And, uh, and uh, he's an amazing man. He's the kind of guy who makes things happen. 
And uh, when we started discussing polo, this, this is what happened. So is he going to bring polo to uh, Hong Kong as well? Or? Well, he is. We brought together polo to Hong Kong for the Masters. We don't have a land and we don't have pony, polo ponies here. So it's a one-off. But at least we show people of Hong Kong what polo is. Yeah. And you will see later on, you will see young kids starting to play with uh, small mallets. Yeah, I think I saw that. And uh, you know, that's the best way. We all started uh, playing with small mallets. It's the best way to get kids addicted to, to riding and polo. Okay. So tell me about your business relationship mm -hmm. with Longy Masters. I mean, the sponsorship itself, mm -hmm. what made you decide that, okay, this is an event that I should sponsor? Not just because you know he made it happen, mm -hmm. but was it, there's got to be a financial reason or maybe yes, a future yes. financial well, uh, problems. The fi financial reason, I told you, we're selling a lot of polo shirts. Uh, that's one of the legitimacy of the polo shirt. Um, um, the other reason is that in Hong Kong, we don't have international events. Uh, of high standards. We actually have the Rugby 7, which is uh, played every year in February, in, actually in March, uh, which is a international, probably the best Rugby 7 in the world, and you have the World Championship of Rugby 7. We used to have a PGA Tour in golf, which is gone. We used to have uh, uh, ATP Tour uh, uh, tennis, which is gone. And so to find a platform of communication of a high standard, of a high level of quality, it's difficult. It happens that the Masters is probably the best platform to communicate uh, luxury brands. So there's not a big sports atmosphere here, or there's not a lot of sports, professional sports. It's, it's, uh, it's, you get horse racing. Yes, which is huge, yeah. which is the biggest uh, uh, racing in the world. Yeah. Uh, but, but no, otherwise, no. There is no, say, I mean, we had Madonna fantastically uh, yesterday at the same time as we were, we were having the horse racing, the whole uh, show. But uh, no, Hong Kong is missing some elements of international flair. And so when we have things like that, of course, as a CEO, I'm going to jump on it and try to have my VIP benefiting from it. Yeah. Okay. So what would you advise other brands that think about sponsoring the launch of Master? What would you advise them to do? Well, for all, okay, it's, first it's a Longin Master. So a Longin yeah. is a master. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, but they call it that too. But they are, they are the main sponsor and, and we're very fortunate to have a brand like this who has this vision to put uh, so much investment and commitment into horses because it's not, not the only show jumping, they are in racing, they have a very coherent strategy in communication. Um, then uh, you have to be different because in a strong uh, environment like this, if you want to exist, you have to bring something different. So last year we actually did a catwalk. We, we catwalked the collection uh, for, the, for the public. So it was a beautiful setting in the middle of the paddock and everything. And I was thinking, okay, well, let's try to do something different. That's how we brought the product. So advice, I don't have any advice to give to any marketing directors. They know what they have to do. But frankly, uh, this is, you know, you have to be different. Yeah. So and coherent with your communication strategy. So it's come here with kind of a plan, a brand activation plan, and to make sure that you know there's some way to kind of highlight that brand if they're here. So yeah, partnership. You did a polo event. I've seen all sorts of things happen mm -hmm. with some of the smaller brands that come here, as well as in Paris and mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um, so you obviously feel like it's worth it if you've returned this year as well. This was worth it because it was the first time that Polo came back to Hong Kong after 35 years. And that's very meaningful. And that's breathworthy. That's why we're talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent.